Hello all, a long time since my last video. A lot has changed, I've got to say. I found a new dome that I believe is much more accurate to the proper R2 dome shape. The previous one, as you would have seen in my videos, was a little flat on top. It uh, was a lampshade, as this one is, but um, yeah, it just didn't quite have that perfect half circle circumference. Not that this one is, this one's actually slightly pointy. I think you can tell by the angle I'm, I'm showing you right now, which is that slightly bulleted shape that R2-D2's dome should have. Um, once again though, this is only a 400 millimeter diameter dome to suit the uh, PVC tube body that I've got. And I've just finished cutting out all the holes. You can see I've got the rear logic hole here. Some other things that have changed uh, is I've got a 3D printer now. So I've actually 3D printed all of the parts. For, so Logics front and back and the HPs. Um, so yeah, uh, what was a, initially a complete scratch build has changed into semi-scratch build, I'll call it. I've also decided because I could only get this is a single dome and I can't I couldn't find a dome to fit inside it snugly and I didn't want to cut up anything else to slightly fit inside I decided to engrave all of the panel lines and as you can see they've turned out pretty good I'm happy with them they're not perfect but neither was the original R2D2 when you look at it closely either and a lot of the cuts were quite bad and not very straight. So if I zoom in here, you can see corners were the things I was having most trouble with. The lines go pretty good when you get a small rounded file in the engraving line afterwards. So that turned out pretty good. You can see those straight lines there look good. But then when you get, I wonder how detailed this, oh yeah, very detailed. Uh, you can see the corners come up a bit wobbly, but like I said, uh, that's what we expect from an R2. He's not perfect, and that's what gives him character. So I'll just give it a bit of a turn around for you. I just did the bone dump hole, the, the bone dump, the dome bump <laughs> holes uh, just then, and they came up very nice, better than the first dome version because it, being a uh, steel dome as it was. Uh, the hole cutter jumped around quite a lot and the holes only just managed to hold the buttons that I've got. The buttons fit perfectly in these ones. Aluminium is much softer and easier to work with. I recommend it if you can get your hands on it. Uh, I've also got the rear PSI here. I was going to cut this piece here out and put a piece of vacuum formed hips plastic behind it and then cut the hole out of the plastic. I uh, ended up sort of deciding against that would be too much hassle. Um, I do have some already preformed hips plastic that might fit behind it, but I just like the look of these engraved lines and this is not gonna to be totally accurate. So there, there's one bit that isn't totally accurate. Um, as I move around, I must say these holes here came up really well. They were stenciled the lines on drilled all the way around with a very small drill bit and then used the Dremel saw blade to cut the joins between those holes. Then you basically do the the uh, bottle trick which you put a piece of sandpaper around the neck of a tapered bottle neck, put it in and just spin 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 until you get the right diameter so that the Hey, the hollow projectors, HPs, put, they just poke through nicely. Of course, the 3D printed ones I've got uh, do poke out too much because they're made for double thickness domes and even thicker aluminium than what I've got here. My, the aluminium is quite thin in this. And you can see there it's probably about one mil, maybe less, uh, thicker towards the top than it is towards the bottom. Even, even thinner there, you can see. 
that's just the way it happens when they spin the domes. The magic panel as well, I decided to leave that as silver. And what I'll do is I might just, the rest of it, I'm about to polish it, that's what this video is all about. Uh, I think I might just mask that off, spray paint this a simple grey or off-white or something like that and just have it as like you know, non non working lots of people do leave that non work non work working but uh, some people do go right to the full extent to make that glow uh, through colors like it's meant to I think I'll leave that front panels look pretty good now you can see that I've got all this that's file scratching there uh, to neaten up uh, some of the spots where the the rounded file that went in the grooves uh, might have jumped out so I've, I've sort of sanded back those major scratches and the next step of course is to give this a really good polish and I'll get on to that in a minute here is the front HP front PSI uh, the worst two panels of them of, of all of them I should have started around the back of course but I, I didn't Big mistake, but as you can see, those two panels there are quite dodgy. Uh, second line there, I don't know exactly why I ended up with two lines right beside each other, but I did. And this drops off to the side a little bit here, and there's a big notch out there. I can't get rid of that. If I did, it would just look way, way too thick, that line. Anyways, I cut this front HP out yesterday, uh, not front HP, the front logics, and they fit in perfectly. I'm really happy with that, and there's a little notch that I can't get rid of either. I'll probably paint that up like it's a, a, a nick or a scratch out of the paint. Room. That's what weathering's really good for hiding. And come back around here, come back to the start. Now I did a test polish. That's this area you're looking at right here. I went with the spin lines uh, in this bit. You can see here I've got a couple of rounded parts there. That was just I tried rounded first, and then I tried to see if I can get rid of those rounded, and I can. This is, this is nice and straight there. So what I'm just about to do now is give this a uh, a wash, a degrees, I suppose you could call it. Get all my fingerprint, oily fingerprints off. You can see there, and then I'm going to go. And polish now because I've already sanded away a lot of the major scratches what I'm going to start with is a, a 360 grit light sand just very light then uh, same with a 400 grit and then I'm going to move to a medium steel wool and go with the, the spin lines because I don't mind that look and it's pretty much accurate to how it is meant to look anyway and I'll go with the lines, I will use some water with that and then the last one will be the fine some go on to using the super fine and that brings it up to a really quite a high polished look but I don't want to go for a high polished look I like that sort of matte but shiny matte look Okay, and this is where we are after polishing. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's definitely come up with a nice sheen all over. You can see that it's not shiny as such. It's not reflective, that's for sure. It's shiny, but not reflective. And you can definitely still see all of the spin lines. It's got that sort of almost a brushed look to it. 
which is how it started off. Here are all my 3D printed parts as well. Um, radar eye, that's the old lens out of the other one. I'm not sure whether I'll keep that. It's got a few scratches on it. I'm not sure. Uh, Holo projectors. One, two, three. That one's yet to be sanded. And yeah, got the logic displays there, obviously. No electronics behind them yet. Rear logic there. Now that fits in better than what I've got it. I've just sticky taped it in from the inside. And I've got the what would be dome bumps. I've got them as power switches. I reckon I'll have one to activate the logics and one to activate the PSIs. There you go. I've also got a shoulder hub printed there. That's just really freshly printed. Um, I'm having another look at this leg and now that I've got a dome that's got a little bit more height to it I'm wondering whether or not I'd stick with this design of leg. Uh, probably not. It is uh, thicker across that way than it's meant to be and I had to shorten them so that means that these should be a little shorter than what I've got them. So, I mean, it's good for mocking it up right now, and it was a good learning thing. I do also have the front vents printed out, and the coupler at the front. I'm printing those out. Some people just make those up, uh, their coin returns. But I printed them out. Uh, coin slots I've got printed out. Can't put them in until I, you can see the PVC pipe and the the skins don't quite match up there, so I'm going to have to get the Dremel inside there and make them match up. I printed out the utility arms, and they'll be in soon. I did print out the large data port, but I've got a smaller scale print bed on my printer than most. I had to print it in two halves, and it just looks pretty awful. So I will come at that at a different way, maybe make it out of hips as suggested to me by a fellow builder. There we go anyway, that's where I'm at at the moment. Next step is painting all the head pieces and painting the head. Till next time. Woo. <laughs> Bye.